G'day, I'm Patrick from Douglas Fur Design. Welcome to the Router Bits. If you've ever wondered why there are so many different router bearings and why they're so confusing, you're not alone. I'm gonna try and run through these in a simple way that'll help you figure out what they're for, why you need them, and uh, you will be puzzled no more. So firstly, we should break all of the router bearings down into three categories, and that is the categories by their internal diameter. That is actually what uh, tells us which bit they can go on. So router bearings with an eight millimeter internal diameter fit on slot cutters. They fit on the, on the threaded end of the slot cutter. Now that doesn't mean if it's, that doesn't matter if it's a quarter inch or a half inch slot cutter, the end is still the same. It's actually like 7.8 on the external diameter of the thread, but an eight mil internal diameter bearing fits perfectly on that. Now those bearings come in lots of different external diameter sizes, and I'll talk about the reasons for that in a second. The second size of bearings fits on a quarter inch or 6.4 millimeter um, shank for a smaller router bit, the kind of router bits that go into a trimmer router, for instance. So again, they come in different sizes on the outside, but the, heart, the quarter inch size internal diameter fits on these router bits. The third size is your standard half inch bearings, which fits on your standard half inch router shank or 12.7 mil. Again, metric imperial conversion is my favorite time of the day. Um, so they come in different outside diameters to match different router bits and different applications. But those are your three main categories. So you've got internal diameter, then you've got external diameter. Back to the eight millimeter internal diameter bits, which are designed to go on slot cutters. This slot cutter is currently set up with a bearing which is about 22 mil across. That means my cut depth for this particular slot cutter is around 14, 15 mil, something like that. Now, there is an exact number, I just don't know what it is. But, so that works perfectly for, say, cutting the 14 millimeter uh, channel that you would need for a number 20 biscuit. But if you're using a smaller biscuit size, then you could increase the diameter of this bearing so that your slot cutter is actually going less deep into the timber creating a shallower trench that would be suitable for a smaller, less deep biscuit. There are plenty of reasons why you'd want your slot cutter to create a deeper or a shallower trench, and that is where the different size bearings come in handy for this particular application. When we move away from the slot cutters into the other bearings, we're talking about the quarter inch shank and the half inch shank, the uh, principles for these two are Pretty similar. There are often comparable bits in half inch and quarter inch that will do these same jobs. When you think about a standard pattern following bit, it generally comes, well, no, it always comes with its own bearing that is exactly the same diameter as the blade itself. But if you put a slightly larger bearing on that, all of a sudden you've got a pattern following bit that can actually enlarge your pattern by a few millimeters. Now there are certain times when this is really useful, we'll leave that up to your own creativity. You can also use these bearings that fit directly on the shank to turn something like this uh, bottom cutting straight bit into its own, essentially, pattern following bit. Now that might be useful if you don't have the pattern following bit you need, or you've already got this one just laying around. Um, there are all kinds of reasons why, you know, that will extend the range of the router bits that you currently have. Same as before, you can turn this round nose plunge bit into a pattern follower, or, or essentially a round nose plunge bit that you can follow along a template. Again, if you're doing work that you cannot do on the table, or you really need to be able to follow a specific pattern, you really extend the range of these bits just by using a bearing. There's a couple other router bits that are traditionally only used in a router table. For instance, um, this is a windowsill bit, sometimes called a finger pull bit. They're kind of slightly interchangeable. You could place a bearing on this, allowing you to follow a guide to be able to, uh, say, create a profile on the edge of an entire table that you just couldn't get over to your router table. It was too big to handle. 
Doing this allows you to use your smaller handheld router, follow a pattern or a template that you've placed in it onto the location and uh, do your work that way. The last little bearing that I want to talk about is tiny, as you can probably barely see. It has a much smaller internal diameter and it's used specifically for putting on the end of uh, roundover bits like this one. So the standard roundover bit has a bearing which has a diameter that perfectly matches the ends of those blades so that you get a perfectly smooth roundover. But by replacing this bearing with a smaller bearing, what I can actually do is use this roundover bit more like a beading bit so that rather than a single round curve, I get a step, then the curve, then another step. So it's a decorative profile. It means again, you can extend what you can do with these bits. <laughs>